<laughs> hey, this is N Squared, and we're back. We're, so we're going to be talking about the NBA draft, and so who are your winners? So I'm just going to do one winner. My winner is the Atlanta Hawks. I mm. think they nailed it in the draft. Some people are skeptical on it. Um, I have the trade right here. They traded their number 8 pick, number 17 pick, and number 35 pick. So you might think, oh, wow, that's a lot. And they also traded a future first-round pick, so that's a lot of picks to trade. Um, but I think they actually got a lot back in return, even if it's only, you know, a player and a couple picks in the future. I think they really got a lot back because they drafted DeAndre Hunter with the fourth pick. They traded it with the Pelicans. I think DeAndre Hunter is going to be a Paul George type player. I think he has a great body already as just coming into the NBA. I think he's about six seven to 30, kind of just that, that size you want for, uh, NBA wing and I think he's he's a pretty solid defender already I think he'll even get better at that he's a decent shooter he can work on that jump shot I think he can be a Paul George and um, matched up to Trey Young and Kevin Huter I think and John Collins also I think he can be that great three that they need um, they had to give up the number eight pick who was Jackson Hayes who was a pretty good center out of Texas um, I still think that he Jackson Hayes is a little raw so I, I do think he's going to be good but I think him, they also had to give away seven, their 17th pick. It was Nikhil Alexander-Walker, who I think is kind of underrated. I think he's a pretty good player. Those two picks, though, I think DeAndre Hunter's going to be better than both of them. So I think they got a lot back. And they also drafted Cam Reddish with their 10th pick. They kept that pick. He can be a guy off the bench who just comes in and scores and can be a scorer just kind of like an Eric Gordon or Lou Williams type player he might not be a great like star but he can definitely be a great guy off the bench and one of their needs is bench depth so I think I think they nailed it so how about you what do you think so I have the nuggets here and it's really because of their trade for Bol 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 was a potential top 10 pick some were saying top 5 pick um Bol Bol yes he has injury issues but he doesn't need to be playing that starting center role. He can be behind Jokic, and whenever Jokic's out, Bull Bull can come in and play like 15 minutes a game and ease himself up. Plus, you're going to have NBA caliber doctors and trainers working with him, and so his injuries may go down just a little bit. He won't have to be playing as much. Um, he can shoot. I mean, his talent is insane. When you watch his plays, he's a very smart player. He's a great defender in the paint. He can shoot. I mean, he was shooting threes in Oregon and in high school. I mean, he's got that talent. And I really think they got a steal whenever yeah. they got both. So I have a couple things to say about that. One, I'm just going to lay out my – I'm going to agree with this part, and then I'll get to my disagreements in a second. <clears throat> I agree. He has all the talent in the world. He has – I mean, if he – the, the best-case scenario is for him to be – a great shooter, a big guy, kind of like a Kristaps Porzingis is kind of what his ceiling is. For me, I think he's a good player. I just, I worry too much. The injury history is just a little too much for me. I just think he's, he only played nine games last season at Oregon. He just, to me, there's something about him that reminds me of like almost a Yao Ming, but Yao, just even lesser version of Yao Ming, who's a, he's a good, he's a great player for Houston for a couple years. But I just think Bobo can't last that I don't think he'll last that long and I think there's a reason there's a reason I feel like everybody slips, like they have a certain reason. And for me, Bobo, yes, he was he's he he has all the talent in the world. I just think there's a reason he slipped and I think that injury history will only <clears throat> only get worse in the NBA. Just when you're that tall and that thin, it's really hard to stay those legs are weak. If you step one the wrong way, it's a torn ACL and you're done for a season. You might not be the next, the same player the next year. So I just, I just have to disagree with the Nuggets. Even though the Nuggets have a stacked roster already, and just if Bobo works out, it's great for him. I just don't think, I don't see it happening. So I'm just thinking he can be the backup to Jokic. Yeah. And whenever Jokic <clears throat> needs to take a rest, you got Bobo there. To I mean that's. Yeah. A good backup to Joe Kick. And yeah. So if he if he only played you know ten minutes a night or something, then yeah, that's a, that's that's pretty good value. I just think they eventually will try to use him in ways and make him play minutes that he can't. And 
that's my worry. If they used them the right way, I think it, it was a great pick, but I just think eventually they'll they'll maybe if in a couple of years when Jokic has his his contract ends up or ends and they'll have, they, what if they get rid of him and take somebody else, then Ball Ball goes into that starting center role. They'll they'll play him a lot and I just I just don't think I don't know for sure how they'll use him, but I just I don't I don't see it yet. Okay. And so we have a losers too, but I sort of have the Pelicans and Lakers on each of these sides here. Right. So the Pelicans, in my opinion, they've won the trade. I mean, they got Zion, and then they got to trade back and get a ton of picks. I mean, they are set for the future. Yeah. They got Zion, or they got um, Lonzo Ball. They got uh, Kuzma. Got some they, other... They got Brandon, Brandon, Brandon Ingram. I'm sorry, Brandon Ingram. And they got some other players that can really work around Zion. It's a very young team that still has so much room to grow. Um, if you look at their potential, that potential is, I mean, if they hit their stride, that's almost championship bound, maybe. Um, I mean, it's a huge potential gap where they could be the worst or the best. Like, yeah. It's a wide margin there, but still, I think with over time, they're going to get used to each other, and they're going to be able to grow and be a yeah. really good team. Now, Lakers, I'm not a fan of AD and LeBron on the same team. I get their two probably top five players in the NBA right now, mm -hmm. but they have no money, yeah. and I wouldn't say their bench is really the best right now. Yeah, they got, I guess they got Kuzma, and I mean... But he's not even on their bench. He's still starting. Like, other than true. those three, they just have a bunch of guys, and yeah. so I'm guessing the Lakers are your, your losing team, right? In the, yeah, the Lakers are... I just don't think it's going to pay off because there is so much talent yeah. in the NBA right now to where... I think two or three years ago this would have been fine but now when we see there is probably yeah. 10 teams i could argue that can make a championship run and also you look at the warriors what happened this year they were going off oh we'll just have our starting five they injured two they get two of their players get out they have a bunch of banged up guys they don't have a bench that can come in and keep it afloat and so i think with the lakers i think they were a couple years behind on the curve on oh yeah the warriors could they did it back then, but I don't think the Lakers now, with all the talent, I agree, can do it. So, yeah, I agree. I'll say my losing team, I think, is the Phoenix Suns. I think they had definitely the worst draft, and I just don't I don't know what they were thinking. They gave up their number six pick for Dario Saric, who is a, he's a decent forward, but he's nothing special. And they gave, and they got the 11th pick back. And... That doesn't sound bad when you say, oh, but the 6th pick for the 11th pick and a decent forward. But when you take Cam Johnson at 11, who was from North Carolina, I had never heard of him. I didn't know who he was. He just was this guy who, the decent player at North Carolina, but he's really, he's the oldest player in the draft. He's had injury concerns, and with him being a shooter, I just, I just worry that the value at that pick now if you get it at you know 31 or 30 or even late first round like that that might be good value but at 11 in the lottery that's really really early to take somebody who is just okay um i think he's a okay player but but just okay i don't think i think they reached really far and then they gave up the sixth pick which was Jarrett culver a player out of texas tech who had a great ncaa championship or NCAA tournament run, excuse me. They did make the championship, by the way. Um, he just, he's he's a much better player than Cam Johnson. Um, and I think they gave up, they, get, they gave him up when he could have been a guy to pair next to Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton and just be that forward, kind of like the DeAndre Hunter thing with the Hawks. He could be kind of like that Paul George. He's a little smaller than Paul George, but he could be, he could be kind of that guy and not give him up and just to get really nothing that great back. 